Hello. Thank you, Professor Shatia Kassler, for this introduction. And uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Marcio Averbeck. I am the head of uh, neuro urology at uh, Munhoz de Vento Hospital in Porto Alegre, Brazil, which is the main city of the southern region of the country. This lecture is on functional anatomy of the lower urinary tract. This is my disclosure. In the beginning, we should talk about what is normal in terms of storage and voiding functions. For the storage function, we should have preserved sensation of bladder fullness so the patient can maintain countenance and postpone micturition if necessary. It would be at a low bladder pressure situation. During storage, the sphincter should be closed, the detrusor should be relaxed, so we have a feeling at a low pressure with sufficient bladder capacity. Now let's talk about the voiding function. The patient should be capable of voiding voluntarily with uninterrupted good stream and with no post-void residual urine. So during the voiding function, the sphincter should be relaxed, the detrusor contracted, the emptying uh, should occur with physiologic pressures and there is no residual urine. The nervous control of countenance and micturition is organized on a cerebral, spinal, and peripheral way. Here we have an illustration to show that the cortex is related to the permission and attention, the midbrain to the safety, the brainstem is the relay center, which means on and off, it distributes the stimuli from the central nervous system to the organs. And in this process, we have the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which are mainly responsible in terms of storage, the sympathetic, and in terms of voiding the parasympathetic. There's also the pudendal nerve, which is responsible for the voluntary control of the pelvic floor muscles. This is another illustration to show the nerves that are related to the sympathetic nervous system. Here we can see the hypogastric nerves and the parasympathetic nervous system and here the pelvic nerve fibers. Let's discuss about neurophysiology now. Here we have a slide to demonstrate the bladder control system. Once the bladder is filling, we have, during the storage phase, a predominant effect of the sympathetic nervous system. So this sympathetic tonus keep the sphincter closed and the detrusor relaxed. But the stimuli providing information about the bladder feeling run through the spinal cord and reach the pontine micturition center, which is really important as a distrib distribution center inside the central nervous system. The information reaches the cerebral cortex and then we have to take a decision to void or not to void. This is voluntary control. Once you decide to void, then the information goes back to the pontine micturition center, which is responsible for the coordination between the detrusor contraction and the sphincter relaxation. So the tonus of the sympathetic is reduced, and at this point, the parasympathetic is predominant and is responsible for the bladder contraction and the voiding process. It means that we have a micturition switching circuit with low level afferent activity 
we should have the bladder relaxed and the sphincter closed and is predominantly sympathetic. With a high level afferent activity, the parasympathetic becomes the predominant and then it makes the voiding phase. In terms of receptors, we know that the parasympathetic nervous system is related to contraction and releases acetylcholine in the bladder and it promotes a bladder contraction. On the other hand, during the storage function, then the, parasymp the sympathetic nervous system is responsible for relaxation, releasing noradrenaline in the bladder, which acts in the beta-3 receptors that are responsible for the bladder relaxation. It provides us some insights on the mechanism of action of the OAB treatments, for example. When we prescribe a beta-3 agonist, it makes something that is alike to the function of the sympathetic nervous system promoting bladder relaxation. On the other hand, when we use antimuscarinics, they block the effects of the parasympathetic nervous system. As we mentioned before, it's mainly responsible for the bladder contraction, so it allows the bladder to be relaxed. In this illustration, we see again the effects of the antimuscarinics inhibiting the trusor contraction and the beta-3 agonists producing the trusor relaxation. Before going forward, it's important to acknowledge that the Pontine Micturition Center has two distinct regions, the M and the L regions. The M region is mainly responsible for the micturition, the voiding process, and the L region mostly uh, responsible for the sphincter control. The inhibition of the periaqueductal gray and pontine micturition center by the forebrain promotes urine storage. On the other hand, the excitatoric signals from the forebrain elicits voluntary voiding. Let's go to the innervation again of the urinary tract. We know that we have the uh, parasympathetic nerves, the pelvic nerves, which I mentioned before, release acetylcholine that stimulate the M3 receptors. We have the hypogastric nerve, which is sympathetic and releases norepinephrine, acting at the beta-3 receptors, causing the trusor relaxation, and on the alpha-1 receptors, causing the bladder neck to keep uh, close. And we have the pudendal nerve, which is voluntary. It releases acetylcholine to the nicotinic receptors for the voluntary control of the pelvic floor and the sphincter. The sensory nerves go through these A delta fibers to the central nervous system. During the filling phase, the detrusor is relaxed, the bladder neck is closed, the somatic pudendal nerve is active so the external sphincter is closed as well. During the filling phase, the stress receptors in the detrusor signal to reflex center in the spinal cord via A-delta fibers. The hypogastric nerve keeps bladder relaxed, sympathetic, and this A-delta nerve initiates motor signals to the detrusor via pelvic nerve. Now let's talk about the voiding phase. The pre-voiding phase uh, has something very interesting. A-delta nerve activity in the spinal cord is increased and there is also activation of the pontine micturition center. Just prior to voiding, the increased afferent stimuli initiate urge to void. And then we know what happens. The bladder is contracting, the sphincter is relaxed, 
and we should void without any significant residual. This phase is mainly parasympathetic. As take-home messages, this nervous control of countenance and micturition is organized on a cerebral, spinal, and peripheral level. The detrusor reflex is a brainstem reflex controlled by centers in the cortex, subcortex, and midbrain. The sympathetic stimuli relax the detrusor and increase the tone of the bladder neck and urethra, and the parasympathetic stimuli contract the detrusor muscle. This is my acknowledgement. Thank you very much for your attention.